Now, I've always considered myself a pretty big fan of the Metal Gear series, and I went into Snake Eater with high expectations. I know I'm playing the game pretty late considering it was released more than a decade ago, but great games never age. This Metal Gear puts you in the boots of Naked Snake in the era of the Cold War. Your mission? Extract the scientist who's been working on a terrible new nuclear weapon, destroy said weapon, and the factory it's being built in. I'm a CIA agent. I've come to escort you back to the other side of the Iron Curtain. Snake Eater took things in a largely different direction than we're used to with previous installments of Metal Gear. Most noticeably, you're no longer sneaking around in tight, urban environments. Quite the contrary, you spend most of your time sneaking through the forests and swamps of Cold War-era Russia. Similar to the earlier installments of Splinter Cell and Thief, you have a type of camouflage index. The higher the percentage, the more invisible you are to your enemies. This is a smart way to help snakes stay hidden in broad daylight, but changing through dozens of types of fatigues and face paints becomes tedious, since a tree bark camo won't hide you as well as a leafy camouflage when lying in tall grass. Another new aspect of Snake Eater is treating wounds obtained on the battlefield. Broken bones, gunshot wounds, food poisoning, even the common cold or ailments that can slow and even kill Snake if left untreated. Some injuries, like deep cuts, require multiple steps to completely treat, but annoyingly don't need to be done in any particular order. I would have thought Hideo Kojima, whose cinematics are so detail-oriented that you can actually see soldiers click the safety on and off of their weapons, would want you to treat a wound in the proper order. The dialogue is unintentionally comical. You're on a top-secret mission. Why are characters talking to me about From Russia With Love or Godzilla? 2004 will be Godzilla's 50th birthday. You think they're still going to be making Godzilla movies then? Of course! Everybody loves Godzilla. There's simply too much non-mission critical dialogue that you have to sift through to get to the main point of what people are trying to tell you. I understand with caricatures like those on display in Metal Gear, some backstory has to be given, but unless you're willing to spend hours listening to nonsense from your support staff, you'll likely never find out what you really want to know. The main characters are also goofy. Eva, a contact you run into early in the game, for some reason always has her jumpsuit half unzipped revealing most of her breasts. Tactical advantage? Or eye candy for prepubescent boys. A young revolver ocelot meows when he wants backup. Yes. Meows. Yeah, I get he's Ocelot, the name of a type of cat, but how could any kind of respected officer get to where he is by meowing? Some other characters available to talk to via codec I never even spoke to. If I can get to the end of the game without speaking to them, why are they even there? I very much wanted to love this game. I have fond memories of Metal Gear Solid and even Sons of Liberty, but this game fell short in many ways for me. The things that were well done could have been done better. Ultimately, I think that Kojima is trying to do two very different things at the same time. Tell an engaging, mature political plot, and create a game simple enough for preteens to mindlessly shoot their way through, being rewarded occasionally with scantily clad women and childish camp. As we've seen with Star Wars The Phantom Menace, it doesn't work, and sadly, neither does this game. Disgusting.